Microsoft Teams just made two huge changes in their app, and they happen to be the most Slack-like updates we have ever seen to Teams. If you know us, we actually use Slack on the daily, and this is getting us just to think a little bit more about should we make the switch over to Teams. So I wanna dig into those two features with you today, and those are unified chats and channels, as well as chat style channels. And you can help us decide should we make the switch from Slack over to Teams. So the first big change coming to Teams is something that you might have noticed already, and that is combined chats and channels interface. So if you're used to seeing this chat tab on Teams, as well as a Teams tab here, you might log on one day and notice things look a little bit different. You'll notice that in this context, I have different channels, but then I have chats right down below, and it's kind of all in this one feed. And sorry if I have to blur stuff out here, I didn't set up like a test tenant or anything. This is our real Teams interface here. So there's, a lot of different things that I could say about this. There's some good things and there's some bad things. The thing that kind of overarches all of it is that Microsoft is trying to design this to be flexible. So they're trying to make it work for everyone and allow people to have enough switches to flip to make it work well for them. So even if you log on and don't love it right away, there's probably some switches that you can flip to make it so you do love it. I think a lot of the basis behind this is that they want to streamline conversations. They want to bring everything in one place because giving people two different places to go creates a fork in the road. And they said, let's bring those all into one place and give people a flexible system so that they have one place to go rather than two. So Teams started with the context of a team with channels underneath it. And over time, you would have multiple teams that you'd be part of probably. And it makes this really long list that you have to kind of traverse through the team and find the right channel every time. They are trying to simplify that here and say, what really matters is the channels and the chats, but you'd be able to customize how those display alongside each other. One of the nicest features that got introduced with this change is the concept of sections. So now in the list of chats and channels, you can create different sections where you create different groupings for your chats and channels to live alongside each other. So let's say in the context of marketing, we have this blogs channel. I can say move to new section and I can call it marketing. And you might think, oh, that's just like Teams. What makes that different? But now, say I have a channel that I'm, this channel that I'm talking to people in, but I also have a group chat that I'm talking to people in, and I want those to live alongside each other. So I can grab this podcast brainstorming chat and drop it right here in the context of marketing and have those things live alongside each other rather than two disparate contexts. My take on this is that some people are going to love it, some are going to hate it. I generally like it for the concept of what they're trying to do. I find that it works well for chat-based teams, for people who use chat a lot and maybe don't use channels a lot. I find when you start to intertwine chats and channels together, things can get confusing and you can lose your place a little bit. And it can start to promote chats to be equal priority as channels. And you'll learn that's a big no-no if you take our course which is called 365 Foundations. We talk all about how you want to build organizational knowledge and that is done in channels and not chats. So we have a strong opinion on that. So that's why I'm labeling it as good for teams who primarily use chats and not a lot of channels. If I had to offer a pro tip for how to use this well, I use it, we're, we're a consulting company, so we have different contexts that we're talking uh, in our channels. My favorite sections that I've come up with are top priority, and then I label the next ones as clients. So when we're having conversations, not with clients, but about clients or projects uh, with our teams, sometimes external conversations, but I digress. And then I have internal, so think channels that are about how we work together when we're having stand-ups or doing like team-based things, all of those channels live in there. And then my last section is low priority. So ones that I wanna be aware of, but I don't need to be checking all the time. Things that I can just browse when I have time is uh, in that low priority section. 
So I talked about some pros, some cons to this feature. There's really just one big one that I see, and that is channels get polluted by chats. Think things like when you have a meeting, it creates a new chat thread. And so all of a sudden that shows up alongside all of your other stuff. And it can start, again, as things start to get intertwined and you're categorizing things and some are chats and some are channels, it reduces that priority on channels. And I think that's a little bit risky. So I want people to look out for that. Last note on this one, for those of you that hate this change and say, give me back what I used to have, I can show you really quick how to do that. If you are in the chat tab and go up to options here and say customize view, you'll see there is an option for combined versus separate. So I was just demoing the combined. We can click on separate here. Also, I have a Teams tab here as well as the chat. So again, this chat now goes back to just direct chats, but then Teams, notice it looks a little bit different. And that is because within this change, they have also introduced the concept of creating sections even if your channels are separate from your chats. So I love this. This is maybe the, the gold nugget for me is that this got introduced where I can have my teams, my channels, all categorized and prioritized the way that I want them to be instead of being in the context of every little team and all the channels alongside each other. So if you are a channel heavy organization, which you should be, I recommend that you revert back and actually separate these things out and say, here's your teams, here's your channels, and communicate with the organization there. So the second big change that is pretty exciting to me is chat style channels. Microsoft calls them threaded conversations, threaded channels, but I view them as something that is a lot closer to chat where you can create threads as necessary. But the thing that I wanna show you here is Normally, when you're in a Teams channel, by default, the way that you interact with people and transfer information, create a message, is you go to this start a post, you write a subject, and you say, this video recording is going well. You create this post, and then people can create individual replies to this post. And so, it's rather formal in nature. It's the concept of, in order to message someone, I need to create a post that warrants a conversation with somebody that they are going to be replying back to and having responses to. And so, to me, this is this is my, my thought process. Some people are different. There's people that love this because it keeps everything self-contained. To me, it creates a really high wall to sending a message that I think twice about is this really important enough to send a message about when honestly most people struggle to use these tools in the first place and we wanna have a really low wall for them to start using these tools and make it easy for them to start posting and then kind of funnel them, put some bumpers up around them. So I don't like the concept of starting by start a post. So what Microsoft is doing is this concept which is very similar to Slack if any of you are familiar is when I create a new channel, now I'm gonna get the option to make this layout be threads or posts. So posts, again, is default, and it's saying threads is new. It looks like chat with replies on the side and threads, good for back and forth discussions. So think of it as maybe a more lively, casual discussions with your team, whereas posts are good for recent updates, forums, and announcements, something that is more structured. So now I'm in this new channel. I don't have this in my tenant yet, so that's why I'm just kind of scrolling through some, some screenshots here, but let's say I'm in this channel, and now I can just go in here and type a message. You'll notice it doesn't say start a post, right? Things look a little bit different when messages have been sent. They look a lot like chats, and then you'll notice underneath them, there's this nine replies here, which indicates someone has been communicating about it. It's not part of the main thread, it's not part of the main channel, but people have, having, have been having some back and forth about it. But I don't see that context right away, which can be good, can, can be bad. I'm gonna leave you guys to, to think about that, but you'll see here, and every new message that comes in, I can click 
reply and thread and create a thread. Then that opens up a kind of side panel where you can have some back and forth on specific messages. There's a ton of nuance to this and best practices that we have sort of developed as second nature, just working in Slack so often. And that is, when do we surface things from a thread up into a channel? When do we have conversations in channels versus spin things off into a thread and things like that? And it's still in a little bit of an art form for us. It's We've developed some science aspects of it, of if you know that conversations are going to spin off and have 50 back and forth, and it doesn't make sense for everyone in the channel to be notified about each one of those things, create a thread. Just spin that off and you're gonna keep that conversation in the channel, but not be notifying everybody about all of it. And then if you have conversations in the thread that you say, oh, this should be something that all of the team finds out about, you'll see you can pick this send to thread and channel. And then when you post it, you'll see this came from a reply in a thread that they can then surface out back to the rest of the channel. So different paradigm from posts and threads. I prefer threads, a couple of us prefer threads, some of us compliance mindset. People uh, definitely prefer the posts because it keeps things structured. But again, if you're more on the side of, I just want people to use the thing, I want people to feel comfortable going in and messaging, try out the threaded conversations. You'll also be able to see all of the threads that you've been communicating in the context of. You can click this open threads button here and then you'll see all of a sudden they pop out and these are all the conversations that you've been having in one feed versus you having to go hunt and peck for them throughout the different channels. So time will tell as to whether people like this more or not. I'm really interested in your feedback. I'd love for you to drop a comment down below if you try it. My general take is it is better. Like I prefer it for internal like team communications that is meant to be like you're in an office with somebody and having some back and forth and trying to make that more real time conversation happen, but in the context of channels but it runs the risk of things getting a little bit messy and being a little less structured than if you were in posts. So you kind of need to pick your enemy there of high wall, high structure versus low wall with requiring people to understand the tool a little bit better and you know have some etiquette within the tool. This is seeing the light of day actually already today. I. The people at our organization that have Windows machines have it. I'm a Mac, so and I don't have it. I don't know what the deal is there, but it is coming. It is actively being pushed out. So you can expect to see that in your organization soon. So back to my first point now, Slack versus Teams. Should we make the switch? I don't know. The the There is still a big cost of switching from one tool to another. So. I don't know, it costs a little, a little bit of money, but now we're at a spot where it's not like a feature or a paradigm is holding us back in Teams as much as it was before. When we originally got on Slack, Slack was more grown up. It was more mature than Teams was, and we didn't want to deal with the frustrations within Teams. But now we have so much information in Slack, it's gonna be a little bit of work to get over into Teams. So. If you are before using any of those tools and trying to decide which way to go, I would call Slack as it's organic, it's light and it's fast, but it doesn't compare to the enterprise readiness and integrations of Microsoft Teams now that these features are coming out. They for sure have leveled the playing field quite a bit, specifically with just these two features that uh, I, happen to love. And last thing before you go, we do have our 365 Foundations course available. It's ready, you can take it at your own pace. It is all about getting your team on the same foundation, the same level to be working from when it comes to understanding the Microsoft 365 tools. And we view it as a prerequisite for anyone that we work with. So I'd encourage you to check that out. We actually have a free preview available over at bulb.digital 365. We'll see you over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.